Hello, everybody. Silent crowd, huh? So, thank you. <laughs> okay, I always have problem with these PowerPoints, but yeah. Did you know all of you that actually, of all the food that we humans uh, eat, only 2% is coming from the ocean? Did you know that? And did you also know that Earth itself is uh, the surface, 71% of it is water, and 96% of this is salt water. But we are not really taking advantage of this. So my name is Nicola Elisco, as you said, and I'm the head chef at this uh, under restaurant. It's an underwater restaurant in Norway, in the most southern part. And we have inside the restaurant, we can have 42 guests, and all the guests are seated more or less on round tables, so they are facing out of, and can see out of the window. This huge panorama window is nine meter long, and uh, almost three meter high. I don't exactly remember how high. But at the restaurant here, you can see that around the, um, the walls, it's one big concrete block, but it's built in a way so that's actually creating its own ecosystem. So after, now we've been running four years, and this is, picture is two years old. So after the first two years, we had uh, a lot of seaweed growing uh, on the construction. And also mussels was living there, and uh, limpets and periwinkles, and then it attracts smaller fishes that comes to live there, and these smaller fishes would attract bigger fishes that then will come and uh, eat the smaller fishes. It's a crucial world, I know. But this is kind of how the ecosystem works, and this is also how that we manage to have fish outside our windows because they kind of attract each other to eat each other. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I had to. So one of uh, the things I would like to talk about is uh, the beautiful of bycatch. But for bycatch, you, to get a bycatch, you need to start to fish for something. And the bycatch that I want to talk about today is uh, a small little crustacean. That's a thing that we get when we are fishing for our langoustine. So the langoustine is a super important ingredient at the restaurant. It's uh, one of the ingredients that I love the most. For me, it's the, the king of the ocean. And it's something that I always wanted to have on the menu in any, some kind of way. And this dish here, I'll just explain a little bit to you so that you understand it. But the langoustine, when we are fishing for them, we are fishing for them with traps. So it's not by trawling or it's not a bycatch. The langoustine we're fishing for by purpose with small traps that I'm going to show you afterwards how it, how it looks so you have a better understanding when I'm talking about the, the bycatch that we have. Um, but when we get in the langoustine, when the fishermen catch the langoustine, it's, uh, it's so precious for us. Uh, and, but also they can be in a bad uh, shape when you're catching them. So that's why that when we catch them, we take good care of them. And then we bring them to a live storage, actually, to go in a kind of quarantine. Uh, quarantine is a good word now. Everybody knows what it is after Corona. So we put them in quarantine for one to two weeks. Because after this one to two weeks, the langoustine is back in shape again. And the ones that is dying by natural, natural causes, they are, they are disappearing. Instead of that, we get them to the restaurant and we will then create food waste. So by doing this, you have probably, some of you had langoustines coming to your restaurants and they are mushy in texture or they are kind of, when you start to bar barbecue them or cook them on the pan, they fall apart. And by doing this, putting them in a live storage facility, then we are avoiding that totally. So instead of having maybe 20% that is in bad shape, we only have maybe 0.5% that's in a bad shape. But this dish here, just to finish the picture, is a beautiful dish, right? Yes, I think so. So the langoustine here that we are using is between 21 to 24 centimeters. For me, this is the best size out from texture and flavor. I think when people are posting pictures of a langoustine that's, that's coloring the entire arm, for me it's too big. I also like to take the pictures and show it on Instagram, of course. But for me, the langoustine there is too big. The texture is more like a lobster for me, and it's not so sweet. And also, if they get smaller than the 21 centimeter that I like, they start to get more sweet. And then the combination together with the sauce and the wine will not be correct. So 21 to 24 centimeter is the size that I prefer in the restaurant. Here we have uh, glazed the langoustine with a glaze made out of, um, we call it its own juice and fermented honey. And the, only, 
Its own juice is actually just uh, langoustine stock and langoustine oil, but just its own juice sounds a little bit more romantic and difficult to make, but it's actually quite simple. We say hello to the barbecue, and then we place on top some uh, salted chive flowers, and then that's it. Then the sauce is made out of uh, pickled plum, some cream, plum vinegar, and then the main ingredients and most important of the sauce is uh, the head of the langoustin, where we open up the head, and then we take out the liver. And the liver is this big brown thing that everybody actually thinks is the brain, but it is the liver, actually. Uh, the brain is just a small little thing that you cannot even see, because an langoustin's nervous system is different than ours. But that's our dish uh, of the langoustin that's creating a bycast. This is how a langoustin trap is looking like. So is this caskets, and then you see the black holes, that's where the langoustine will go in. And then the small one, they will go out again, but the big one, they will stay, so that's good for us. Then sometimes we have uh, a, a, this small little bycast I'm going to talk about afterwards that will go in, and it's apparently not clever enough to get out, like the langoustine is the small one for sure. So the way that we are fishing them is like this. We have in... Um, the brown gray, brown part, sorry, is uh, with the black nice traps I have been drawing, is uh, the langoustin traps, how they are placed in the bottom of the ocean. And it's normally we will have 20 on one line with two meters in between. And then they have to be on sand or muddy uh, bottom. If you hit the black rocks I have been so beautiful drawing here, then you will get something else. Then you will get the squat lobster that I'm going to talk about uh, soon now. So this is the squat lobster. And it's, uh, I'm also going to cook a little this for you just so you can show. So I don't know if the camera guy can move over or if I have to go to you. Yeah, I will find out. But anyway, it's the, it's squat lobster is for me a really important ingredient. I think that it's kind of showing a part of the identity of the restaurant. Since for me, the restaurant is, um, obviously, we cook a lot of seafood, but it's not only a seafood restaurant. I, I don't like to be called a seafood restaurant. For me, it's important that we are talking more about the biodiversity, as also this Congress is, is all about today. So I can easily use a piece of meat if the animal had a good life, and it is, if it's uh, taken good care of from its born to the production side and until it's getting slaughtered. And actually now uh, we're going to have lamb on the menu, where these lamb, when they are born, they are living their life on an island where they can eat whatever they find, um, like from juniper to pine cones to any herbs they would like to eat that day. And also even seaweed, sometimes bladder rack and knotted rack, uh, because they cannot really swim, so they have to stay on the, on the land. But to go back to the squat lobster, it's... Um, as I said, it's one of the identity of the restaurant because I want to showcase that the ocean has more to offer than just the common things that we might know, like salmon and cod and all these things that we are eating too much of, actually, in Scandinavia. And also, we are not, taking, we are not going deep enough in the ecosystem. The langoustin we are catching and the squat lobster is catching between 70 to 150 meters. But if we want to make a sustainable fishing, and, and to be a sustainable world, as we all talk about all the time, we actually have to f try to f catch fishes from 200 meters and maybe down to 1,000 meters. And, but here, if I can make the dish, I don't know how we're going to do with the camera. It's okay? Yes? So here, yeah, I have the squat lobster. It's, um, this one is a symbol dish, but I like to serve it in this way because for me, the taste of a raw squat lobster is simply amazing. You have a little bit of the same feeling if you eat um, a mixture between shrimps and langoustine, actually. So I just glaze it really carefully here with an oil that's made with a seaweed that has the same taste as a truffle. So we call it a truffle seaweed because we are so genius. And this langoust, uh, sorry, this. Um, uh, squat lobster here, I forgot to say, but it's really important that when you catch them, you have to take really good care of them, just like the langoustin. Because if it's getting stressed, it's going to taste like ammoniac. It's going to mm, fall in pieces, and uh, it's really important that you keep it nicely on the boat. Um, and then afterwards in a live storage facility also. So together with the... 
Together with this squad lobster, we serve an kefir cream out of milk kefir that we have seasoned with a pickled rose, um, like brine, and also uh, some of this truffle seaweed oil. And the idea to this dish is that you eat first, you take the tail and eat it as it is and enjoy the beautiful flavors. And afterwards, you will suck out the head. And there you will, it's a little bit bitter. Uh, but sometimes I feel that it has a little bit notes of mushroom also. Maybe it's just me that's strange. But I think that it has a little bit this mushroom kind of, um, of feeling. And then together with that mushroom kind of feeling, you will eat the kefir, the spoon with the kefir. And then together in the mouth, it will make a really good harmony, I think. So that was the squad lobster. So this one is, I don't know what it's called in English actually, but it's the thing, it's a kind of box as you see with holes in, and this box is made to put in the bait when we're fishing for langoustine. So the, the, the bait we use normally for the langoustine is fresh feet, fish, sorry. And, but we have tried with different other things, and there, when we use this, um, these boxes, there is, you can get them in different sizes of the holes. You can have four centimeters, six centimeters, eight centimeters. When we have the one that's six centimeters and over, there is a small little crustacean that is extremely small. It will go inside this box, and it's looking like this is a sea lice. And this, I think, can be the future of food. But this little sea lice, you can catch from 100 meters and down to 1,000 meters. This little sea lice, it goes into the box. And then it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit like me. I was also skinny before. But I eat and I eat and I eat. I get too fat and now I cannot fit the jackets anymore and it cannot get out of the box. So it's, uh, yeah, there's someone saying like me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> So this, I think, can be an important thing for the, uh, for the bigger picture if you're thinking about that we have to go deeper in the ecosystem to find food sources. Because this one, maybe in Scandinavia, probably not going to eat it like we would eat a langoustine because they are super, super small. They are maximum uh, maybe uh, one centimeter long. Uh, but I think that the taste of them is wonderful depending on what you are catching them with, because we have tried with different things. Some things work better than others. We tried, for instance, with a half-rotten fish, which sounds super disgusting, but also this crustacean will taste super disgusting then. So when we talk about that you, you are what you eat, this is a really, really good uh, answer for that. The best thing I think to use is blue mussels. And when we use the blue mussel to catch this one, I think that we got a flavor that was a little bit like, like cheesy and super creamy. It reminded me, now I should probably behave with the French people around, but a little bit like a comté that's not uh, aged too much, but just super creamy. And this, I think, could be a really nice thing to use more of. And also to maybe we could make burgers out of this in the future, I don't know. But one thing is sure is that we need to go much deeper in the ecosystem if we want to be on this planet in uh, three, four hundred years from now. Uh, two percent of the seafood or two percent of the food we eat, if that's only seafood, I think that we have to look into something. Am I right? Yes. Thank you. So, thank you. I don't know how much time I have left. Oh, can we have one video, please? Yes, please start the video. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This is just a little bit of, uh, not how my daily day is, but how I would love it to be. But this is a little bit of the philosophy from the restaurant.
That's it. Thank you. I hope to come back next year and talk about seaweed then. Good man. Thank you.